Could I take this opportunity of welcoming each and every one along to our service today? We welcome you in the Savior's name, and especially if you're visiting with us, we give you a very warm welcome. Uh, we're delighted to have a group of young people who are up for the weekend in this part of the country from the Youth Council, and we do welcome them, and the Reverend Paul Foster's with them. Give our brother a very warm welcome as well. They're going to sing for us this morning, and we're certainly looking forward uh, to that. But we're going to open our service by singing a lovely hymn, number seven in our own hymn book. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life in atonement for sin and opened the life gate that all may go in. And after the singing of this hymn, I'm going to ask the Reverend Foster if he would come and open our meeting in a word of prayer. privilege to be with you here this morning, and let us bow our heads, let us still our hearts, let us ask the Lord for His grace to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Let us all pray. Our gracious Lord and our Father in heaven, we thank Thee for who Thou art. Mm. We thank Thee that Thou art the true and the living God. We thank Thee, Father, 
for all that thou dost reveal of thyself to us in creation, thy greatness, thy power, thy majesty, thy wisdom, and indeed, Father, even through our conscience, that thou art the one who is just and thou art the one who is holy. And yet, Father, I also want to thank thee for what thou dost revealed to us then in thy precious word. Thy beloved Son, when he came to this earth, is the one who said that, Search the Scriptures, for they are they which testify of me. And we thank thee, Father, that while we are aware of thy holiness and indeed of our sinfulness before thee, yet, Lord, in thy precious word we read of grace. In thy word we read of salvation. And, Father, we read of mercy. And it's all through thine only beloved and much begotten Son, Lord, thy begotten Son, Lord, we thank thee for what thou hast revealed to us regarding him in the word. And, Father, we pray that whenever it comes to the reading of thy word later on in the service, whenever it comes, Father, to the preaching of thy word, that thou wouldst give thy servant great help. And, Lord, we pray that he would know the infilling of the Holy Spirit of God, Lord, of thee bringing to his mind what thou wouldst have him to say. And I ask thee, Father, that every one of us, that our hearts would be surrendered, that we would be submissive, Lord, willing to receive whatever thou dost have to say to us today. Lord, whether it be a word of encouragement, Lord, whether it be a word that uh, rebukes us, Lord, a word that encourages us, Lord, whatever it may be, uh, Lord, may we hear thy word. And Father, I pray, may we then uh, take thy word, apply it to our hearts, we not simply be those that say, I need to do that and then do nothing about it. But Lord, may we be those that hear thy word and not forget thy word, but Lord, apply thy word to our hearts. Father, may we be changed this day. Lord, we as thy people, Lord, how it is thy will that we would be sanctified through thy truth. Lord, we believe that Jesus Christ this very moment is at thy right side as the Savior who's paid the debt for our sins and having purchased every spiritual blessing in heavenly places, he is pleading over the work that he has done. And Father, we thank that he's heard of thee always. And Lord, surely he's praying now that we would be sanctified through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So Lord, sanctify us today. Lord, may thy blessing, as the psalmist said, be upon thy people. Oh, Father, lead us on with Christ today. Lord, purify our hearts. Give us greater understanding of thee and of thy love to us in Christ, a greater love for Christ and a greater will to live for him who gave his all for us. Lord, revive our hearts this day. And Father, for any that are lost in this meeting, through the truths of the gospel in what will be sung, through thy word as it will be read, through thy word as it will be explained, taught, and applied in preaching, we pray, Father, that thou wouldst bring the lost to Christ. We thank thee, Father, that it is thy word that quickeneth, the Spirit of God applying it to hearts. And Father, in this building, perhaps there are those, maybe they're younger, maybe they're older, and Lord, they do not know thee. They know about thee, but they do not know thee. And we pray, Father, that this would be a day of rejoicing in glory, in the presence of the angels in heaven, but Lord, also here of sinners. In the plural, Lord, sinners coming to faith in Christ and coming to him for salvation. So, Lord, undertake, give us grace to worship thee this day in spirit and in truth. And may our focus always be upon the Lord and exalting him, praising him. May we be changed by him for his glory. We thank thee for this church. We thank thee for this congregation. We thank thee for raising it up and Lord, for thy blessing upon it, Lord, may it continue, may it abound in these days, the glory of Christ in this area. Be with the needs of all thy people, Lord, the one who knows those that are going through trials and difficulties. O oh, Lord, give added grace whenever added grace is needed. Meet every one of thy children at the point of their need. May they know the truth of Psalm 23, that the Lord is their shepherd, and they shall not be in want. In Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen. Amen. Do take the Reverend Foster upon your heart. He has accepted a, a call to our congregation uh, in Kilkeel, and he'll be installed this month. So do pray for him and his wife and family as they move from Dremore in the days that lie ahead. We're all going to sing a couple of verses of another hymn. It's number 50 in the hymn book. 
Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions. They fail not as thou hast been. Thy forever will be. We'll sing the first two verses only, please, and we'll stand again to sing. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. And we'll commence our reading at verse 1 of this chapter. And we'll read down to verse 16. 1 Kings chapter 18. Commencing our reading at verse 1. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. And Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. For he was, for it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord, that Obadiah took a hundred prophets, and hid them by fifty in a cave, and fed them with bread and water. And Ahab said unto Obadiah, Go into the land, unto all the fountains of water, and unto all brooks. Peradventure we may find grass to save the horses and mules alive that we lose not all the beasts. So they divided the land between them to pass throughout it. Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. And as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him, and he knew him, and fell on his face and said, Art thou that, my lord Elijah? And he answered him, I am. Go tell thy Lord, 
Behold, Elijah is here. And he said, What have I sinned that thou wouldest deliver thy servant into the hand of Ahab to slay me? As the Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom whether my Lord hath not sent to seek thee. And when they said, He is not there, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation that they have found thee not. And now sayest thou, Go tell thy Lord, Behold, Elijah is here. And it shall come to pass, as soon as I am gone from thee, that the Spirit of the Lord shall carry thee, whether I know not. And so when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me. But I, thy servant, fear the Lord from my youth. Was it not told my Lord what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord, how I hid a hundred men of the Lord's prophets by fifty in a cave, and fed them with bread and water? And now thou sayest, Go, tell thy Lord, Behold, Elijah is here, and he shall slay me. And Elijah said, As the Lord of hosts liveth before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. Amen. We'll end our reading there at verse 16, knowing the Lord will bless the public reading of his precious word to all of our hearts. Now, we are delighted to have the young people with us today. Let me give them again a very warm welcome, the young people from the Youth Council. And they're going to come now and they're going to bring us a couple of messages and so on. Thank you.
May the Lord bless those two lovely hymns to our hearts today. Again, we want to thank the young people for singing for us. Very short notice, may I ask, but certainly we really enjoyed those two hymns that they chose to sing today, and we pray that the Lord will bless the young people in their lives and the youth council as they continue to serve the Lord uh, in these days. Again, could I take this opportunity of welcoming each and every one along to our service today, our morning worship. We welcome each and every one, especially if you are visiting, we give you a very warm welcome. And those tuning in through social media, we welcome you as well. Just a few announcements very, very quickly. Do you remember that being the first Sunday of the month, this is the church maintenance offering day, so we just ask you to give as the Lord has laid upon your heart. Remember the gospel service tonight at 6.30 p.m. I'll be here to take the service tonight to preach the gospel, and the Montgomery sisters will be here to sing this evening, and that service will be preceded by the half hour of prayer. So please come back again tonight. Bring your friends and family with you under the sound of the gospel. Tuesday night, the prayer meeting at 8 p.m., and this Tuesday night, our brother Mr. Chris Killen will be coming along to tell of the work that he's involved with and there'll be a retiring offering taken up. It'll be a deputation meeting on Tuesday evening. So if you don't normally come, we would encourage you to come on Tuesday night. I know that you'll enjoy our brother Chris and his report and uh, the Word of God that he will bring to our hearts. Wednesday morning, the little treasures at 10 a.m., and then also Wednesday evening at 7.30 p.m., the YM meeting for uh, the the young people, Uh, Do remember that meeting as well and pray that the Lord will bless. The young people are gathered in again under the sound of God's word. Friday night, the children's meeting and the children's meeting plus at 7 p.m. Then our youth fellowship at 8 p.m. Next Lord's Day, the Sunday school at a quarter past 10 and the Bible classes at 10.30. And then the services 11.30 in the morning and 6.30 p.m. in the evening. Our next Sunday night is a family night service one of our special family night services. And our brother, Reverend Gary Goods, will be coming along to give his testimony. And there'll be supper for everyone after the service next Sunday evening. Now, our brother, Mr. Goods, has a wonderful testimony of how the Lord saved him. And if you've never heard his testimony, then I would encourage you to come along and invite others as well. And our brother, Peter Mandarin, will be here to sing next Sunday evening at that special family night uh, service. Do continue to pray for the gospel mission that we're having in the month of April in Tonicmore Orange Hall. I know that you have been praying for this mission, but pray that the Lord, continue to pray that the Lord will bless as uh, the invitations go out and that the time approaches. Remember also this week in our church in Lisburn, uh, the Mission Vision Conference, organized by our mission board uh, the 6th to the 9th of March this week each night. And I would encourage as many to go along to that special conference as possible. And I know that you will enjoy the preaching again of God's Word. Remember the Easter Convention, Friday the 29th, Saturday the 30th, and then Monday the 1st of April. And again, we draw your attention to the Easter Convention. I know that many of you go down year by year And it's always a great time of fellowship and a great time of God's precious word going forth. Also, uh, on Thursday, the 21st of March at 8 p.m., here in the church in Tondragee, they're having the Christian Workers Training Academy graduation service. Over these past number of months and even way before Christmas each Thursday evening, uh, different folks have been coming along to that Christian Workers Training Academy and some of her, out of her own congregation have been attending that as well. Well, they're having this graduation service in the church on that, on that evening, and the Reverend Timothy Nelson is the guest preacher on that occasion. So do please keep that, keep that uh, night free if possible. Also, the Vision magazine has uh, arrived, so please take a copy as you leave uh, the church today. Now, I think that's all the announcements that uh, I want to make just at this stage. Just before uh, Christmas, indeed, 
at the last month of last year, our brother, Mr. Uh, Billy Patton, uh, stepped down from uh, the committee. And Billy was in the committee for 42 years. And certainly we, as a committee and a session, congregation, we want to uh, thank our brother for many years of faithful labor. And of course, during those 42 years, he was in uh, quite a number of committees elected on. And again, that shows us his standing in the congregation here. And to Billy and to Edith, we want to wish them God's richest blessing in the days that lie ahead. But I'm going to ask Billy to come up with a wee presentation to present to him this morning. And I'm going to ask Billy to come up on, on behalf of the session and committee and congregation. I would like him just to come up and receive this. Come on ahead, Billy. Don't be shy. <laughs> it's a copy of the Reformation Heritage Study Bible. Uh, so, Billy, on behalf of the session and committee and congregation, I would like to present you with this Bible and just a wee gift there as well. And to thank you for 42 years faithful service. It's, it's hard to believe all those years. Do you want to say a few words? It will be a few because I was told not to belong. <laughs> a certain mom said to me, uh, I have to preach after you. <laughs> so um, I have it here, what I was going to say. First of all, I would like to thank God for allowing me 43 years <coughs> to serve this congregation. I'd like to thank Edith my wife, in case for those that don't know who she is, <laughs> for all her prayers, support and encouragement over the years. And last but not least, I'd like to thank the session and committee for putting up with me. <laughs> so, uh, to God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Now they say, behind every good man there's a good woman, <laughs> or maybe it's a better woman. <laughs> but we're going to ask Edith to come up now, and I'm going to present her with a wee bunch of flowers. So come on ahead, Edith. Have you got your speech ready too, Edith, have you? <laughs> Edith, just on behalf of the congregation, we'd just like to present you with a wee bunch of flowers. And thank you for all your help. For, you do a lot of work in the church as well. God bless you. God bless. We're going to sing a, an offering hymn now. It's hymn number uh, 591, 591 in the hymn book. When all my labors and trials are o'er, and I am safe on that beautiful shore, just to be near the dear Lord I adore, will through the ages be glory for me. We'll keep our seats as the offering is taken up.
let's all bow in a word of prayer and ask the Lord for his help as we come now to consider God's word. Our loving Father in heaven, we do thank thee and praise thee for all thy mercies to us today and for thy presence with us. We thank thee, Lord, for faithful servants of thine. Thank thee for these many years that our brother Billy has served thee down through the years, Lord. We thank thee, Lord, for his faithful labors, both him and Edith. We pray, Lord, that you would bless them richly in the days that lie ahead. O God, as we turn to thy word just now, we pray, Lord, that you would have a word in season for each and every one of us. We pray, Lord, that you would fill us with thy gracious Holy Spirit. How we need thee, Lord. O God, our earnest prayer is that man would be hid far behind the cross, that none would be seen save Jesus only. For us in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Please turn to that portion of Scripture we read earlier in 1 Kings chapter 18. This morning I want us to consider a man by the name of Obadiah. Now there are no less than 13 different men mentioned in the Bible by this name. But the particular individual that we have chosen to consider today is only mentioned once in the Bible, and that is in this portion of Scripture which we have read in 1 Kings chapter 18. The Obadiah in this portion of Scripture was governor in the palace of King Ahab. Ahab, of course, was the most ungodly king who ever sat upon the throne of Israel. And he was married to the most wicked queen that any king ever had in Israel. That, of course, was Queen Jezebel. It was in the midst of these circumstances, these ungodly circumstances, that we find our character Obadiah. As we're going to find out today, Obadiah was a servant of the Lord who was seeking to do his best for God in very strange and difficult circumstances. Indeed, many preachers and even some commentators have criticized Obadiah severely because of the position he held in Ahab's palace. However, as we come to consider this man this morning, we're going to find out that while Obadiah most certainly had his faults, he was a godly man with many noble qualities. And I pray that as we consider Obadiah today, that the Lord will come and speak to all of our hearts. There's no doubt that here we have a man who sought to serve the Lord in very strange and difficult circumstances. You know, child of God, let me give you a bit of advice. When you stop to consider any Christian, before you condemn their weak points, observe their strong points. And perhaps this will go a long way in preventing us from having a critical spirit continually about other believers. And if you have to point out a brother or a sister's failures, then go to them personally and speak to them privately about the matter. You know, it's interesting to note here that nowhere in this chapter does Elijah criticize Obadiah because of the position he held in Ahab's palace. And that's something, I believe, worth noting. But what do we learn here about this character? Well, first of all, I want you to notice his clear testimony. Obadiah's clear testimony. In verse 12, Obadiah, when speaking to the prophet Elijah, says at the end of the verse, underline the words, but I, thy servant, fear the Lord from my youth. And then in verse 3, at the end of that verse, it says this, Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. Now, what a wonderful testimony for any person to have, to be able to look back over their life and say that they have feared the Lord from their youth. We're not told whether Obadiah had godly parents or not. I am of the opinion that he had. However, there's no doubt that from an early age he was brought up in the things of God and taught about Jehovah, the everlasting God. And it was while Obadiah was young that he came to know and to fear the Lord. 
Therefore, I believe that Obadiah was saved when he was only a young boy. The Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And right from Obadiah's earliest days, indeed, when he was still a young boy, he had received the knowledge and the wisdom of God in salvation. Could I say to all the young people in the meeting today, get saved when you're young. While it is a great blessing to be saved in the winter of life, great mercy from God, and yet to be saved when you're young is far, far better because not only is it a soul saved, but it is a life saved to serve the Lord. But young people, there's another reason why you should get saved when you're young, because the older you become, the harder it is to come to Christ. That's why I would exhort all of our young people today, but everyone that's in the meeting and you're not saved, to come and trust the Lord Jesus Christ as your own and personal Savior. A number of years ago, an evangelist who was preaching in a large congregation of four and a half thousand people asked for various age groups to signify by raising their hands when they were saved. 400 of those present indicated that they were saved under the age of 10 years of age. 600 indicated that they were saved between the ages of 10 and 18. A thousand present at that meeting indicated that they were converted uh, between the age, after the age of 20, and only 24 indicated that they were saved after the age of 36. The remainder of the congregation were unconverted. Therefore, 99% of all those converted in that congregation were saved under the age of 21. Oh, I pray today that the Lord will speak to your heart, and especially if you're here today and you're young, that you will come and put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when we consider these figures, how important it is to reach boys and girls and young people with the message of the gospel, with the view of leading them to a knowledge of Jesus Christ when they're young in life. Because humanly speaking, the older they become, the less likely they are to be saved. And certainly that is a fact. Could I say to Sunday school teachers and to children's workers and to youth leaders, do not underestimate the importance of the job that you're seeking to do among the children and the young people. You have a great responsibility to get the message of the gospel to them. And what a responsibility it is to make sure that you point them to Christ, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Obadiah's clear testimony was that he feared the Lord from his youth. Remember what the Bible says, Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh. In Proverbs 22, verse 6, it says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. But I want you to notice something else here from this clear testimony of Obadiah. Not only did he know the Lord and fear the Lord, but he also walked with the Lord from his youth. Take a look at verse 12 again. The word from in verse 12 indicates that Obadiah was still walking in the fear of the Lord when he was speaking to Elijah. Therefore, he had not only been saved young in life, but he had from that time continued to follow the Lord and grow in the knowledge of the Lord. It's great to be saved when you're young, but we must remember that it's vital to spend the rest of our days following the Lord. Young people, men and women, indeed each and every one of us, so important to continue walking in the Christian life. We are to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's sad to see people today making professions of faith and then falling away by the wayside. Obadiah was not only saved, but he was one who walked with the Lord from his youth. And even when he came face to face here with Elijah the prophet, I believe we can 
say that he was still walking with the Lord and the fear of the Lord was still in his heart. I want you to keep your hand there in 1 Kings chapter 18 for a moment and turn over to Acts chapter 26 because in Acts chapter 26, the Apostle Paul here is giving us testimony before King Agrippa. And it's interesting to note what the Apostle Paul said when he was giving us testimony. In verse 22, he said this, Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day. I continue unto this day. Oh, I pray in these days in which we live that our testimony is right up to date. We must be able to look back to that day in our lives when the Lord saved us. Yes, but child of God, it's important that we're walking with God today, that we're seeking to live for the Lord today, that we have heard that still small voice of God speaking to us today. I wonder, as you've opened your Bible this morning, has the Lord spoken to you? As you've got down on your knees this morning, even before you come out to public worship, has the Lord spoken to you? It's so important that as Christians, as believers, as born-again ones, that we walk with the Lord day by day and that we continue to walk with the Lord. There's another tremendous text of Scripture. Turn over to it in Acts, Acts chapter 2, and it's the verse 42. I'm sure it's a familiar verse to many of us, if not all of us. But look what it says there in Acts 2, verse 42. It says, concerning those who were saved, it says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. They continued steadfastly. Oh, I pray in these days that we're saved and walking with the Lord and that our testimony is right up to date. But turn back again to 1 Kings chapter 18. Something else I want you to notice here. Not only Obadiah's clear testimony, but I want you to notice, secondly, Obadiah's courageous work for God. There's no doubt that when you study this passage of Scripture in 1 Kings chapter 18, that Obadiah was quite naturally fearful of Ahab. This can be seen clearly when Elijah told Obadiah to go and tell Ahab that he had found the prophet. The problem was that up until that time, Ahab had killed everyone who had even spoken to Elijah. Therefore, Obadiah was afraid that Ahab would take his life because he had spoken to the prophet. Look there at verse 9, and it says, What have I sinned that thou wouldest deliver thy servant into the hand of Ahab to slay me. And yet, although there was this natural fear of man within Obadiah, we must point out here that Obadiah displayed great courage in saving the lives of a hundred prophets of God at the time when wicked Jezebel sought to destroy all of God's servants. Look what it says there. In the verse, in the verse 14, And now thou sayest, Go tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here, and he shall slay me. But look at verse, the end of verse 12. It's, or the, uh, verse 12, And it shall come to pass as soon as I am gone over there from thee, that the Spirit of the Lord shall carry thee whether thou knowest not, and so will I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me. Look what it says in verse, in verse 13. Was it not told my Lord what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord, how I hid a hundred men of the Lord's prophets by fifty in a cave, and fed them with bread and with water? My it can be seen here that Obadiah overcame the natural fear that was in him at a time of great testing in his personal life. There's no doubt that Obadiah served the Lord in very strange times and under the most trying circumstances. Not only did he show great courage, but he also showed deep compassion for God's servants who were 
under persecution from the forces of evil. So here we can see a man who was courageous, and although he had the fear of Ahab before him, he still did that which was right in the sight of God. You know, there are three thoughts here that I want to bring out onto this point very quickly. Let us serve the Lord no matter what our circumstances. Wherever we are day by day, let us continue to witness for Christ and seek to do that which is right before the Lord. And also, God will give us strength to overcome our weaknesses. Maybe there's someone here today and you feel that you can't do anything for the Lord. Well, that's not the case because little is much when God is in it. And it was the Apostle Paul who said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. But there's another thought here. God's servants are found everywhere. God's servants are found everywhere. In the midst of Egypt, God had Joseph. In the midst of Babylon, God had Daniel. And in the midst of Jezebel's wicked persecution, God had Obadiah. There's a tremendous text of Scripture, and it's found in Philippians 4 and verse 4. And this is what it says. It says, All the saints salute you, chiefly they that are of the household of Caesar, or Caesar's household. And there were even God's servants in Caesar's household. O child of God, wherever the Lord has placed you, at work, at university, at college, wherever he places you from day to day, and perhaps you're in circumstances that are hard to witness for Christ. Maybe you even work among ungodly men and ungodly women who have no time for the Lord Jesus Christ. Even in those circumstances, the Lord can take you up and the Lord can use you uh, to give a word for him. And that's why we should never be ashamed to speak a word for Christ, no matter where we're found from day to day. And thank God if you do speak up for the Lord and speak out for Him, the Lord will bless you and the Lord will use that word and the Lord will use your testimony even in those circumstances. Now, there's something else I want you to notice here. Turn back again to 1 Kings chapter 18. I want you to notice... Thirdly, Obadiah's contribution to the great and mighty victory that the Lord wrought through Elijah on Mount Carmel. Now, there's no doubt that Elijah was the man of God, that the man that God used in a mighty way in the days of Ahab. And if you read on down 1 Kings chapter 18, you will read about the great event which took place between Elijah and the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. And of course, that's the portion of Scripture at the end of this chapter and into chapter 19 that's so familiar, I'm sure, to most of us. But not only did God send the fire from heaven to consume the sacrifice, but also, of course, that day, the false prophets of Baal were destroyed. However, verses 16 and 17 of this chapter remind us that Obadiah's service for the Lord at this time was a valuable link in the chain of God's working to bring the events which took place on Mount Carmel to pass. And although it was only a very small link in the chain of events, still Obadiah's contribution cannot be overlooked. Not only once again did he overcome his fear, but he brought Elijah and Ahab together for the first time. Take a look at verse 15 and 16. And Elijah said, As the Lord of hosts liveth before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. It's a very small link in the events of these chapters here, but nevertheless, it is a link. Obadiah Because of his position in the palace, he went and he told Ahab, Elijah wants to see you, and he wants to see you now. And because of that link, 
that he had in the palace. Both men were brought together. And then we have the wonderful events which took place on the top of Mount Carmel. Child of God, we can see here the value of doing the little things for God. We may not all be able to be Elijah's, but we can all be Obadiah's. We may not all be in a position to lead sinners to Christ, but we all can be a link in the chain to bring sinners to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul said in one occasion, one soweth and another reapeth, but it's the Lord that gives the increase. Little is much when God is in it. I wonder, did you ever think of all those involved, humanly speaking, all those involved, child of God, in your conversion? You know, when I give my, my testimony, I always emphasize uh, the preacher. I always emphasize the meeting that I was at where I heard the Word of God. And of course, the preacher the night I was saved was the Reverend Ken Elliot. He was the man that God used to preach the night I came to know the Lord Jesus Christ as my Redeemer. But there were many others involved that night. And indeed, even before that night, I said last Sunday morning, many years before I was saved, my grandparents prayed for me. And there were others who prayed for me. And the Lord answered their prayers on that night when I got saved. But also thinking of that night, I think of the neighbor, my next door neighbor, who invited me to the meeting. I had never been under the Free Presbyterian Church ministry before. I had never been to that gospel mission before. It had been running for almost four weeks in Portadown on the Brownstown Road. And all of a sudden, my next door neighbor invited myself and my brother to go to that service. Humanly speaking, if she had not invited me, I would not have been there that night to hear the Reverend Elliot preach the gospel. And also, not only the contribution that my neighbor made, but what about the bus driver who drove us to the meeting that night? I had no way to get to a meeting. We had no car in our home. My neighbor had no car. Bethany sent a bus out to lift those in the birches to bring them to that mission. That bus driver brought me to the mission. What about the contribution that he made that night when I was saved. And then after the meeting was over, the man who actually sat down beside me opened his Bible and showed me from God's Word how I could be saved. What about his contribution? Oh, child of God, you may not be the preacher, but the Lord can and wants to use your contribution in his work and in his service. And that's why each and every one of us who are saved were important to the Lord. As I have emphasized there, we may not all be an Elijah, but we can all be an Obadiah. And there's a work for each and every one of us to do for the Lord, even in this 21st century. I pray that we will know where the Lord wants us to be from day to day, and that we will know His will in our lives, and that wherever He places us, whether it's on the farm, whether it's a nurse in the hospital, whether it's working in an office, whether it is in Bible college and full-time service, the Lord knows. May the Lord take us all up and use us, because we're all valuable to the Lord. And the Lord wants to use each and every one of us. I suppose the lesson from this point is, are we doing what we can for the Lord? Are we serving Him to the best of our ability? There's one, one little thought I want to leave you with just before we finish. It's the meaning of Obadiah's name. 
Obadiah means a servant of the Lord. I wonder, are we the servants of the Lord? Oh, child of God, I pray that each and every one of us are seeking to do our best for God, even in the circumstances where He has placed us from day to day and from week to week. And I pray that the Lord will take us all up and use us for His glory and for His great name's sake. But maybe you're in the meeting today and you're still outside of Christ. You know nothing of God's saving grace in your life. My friend, whether you're young or whether you're old, you need to come and put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus as your own and personal Redeemer. Do you fear the Lord? My, as we quoted there a moment ago, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And I pray today that even that you will come and by faith trust the Lord Jesus as your own and personal Savior. Because the Bible emphasizes now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. And even this Lord's day that you will come and put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. I pray that the Lord will bless these few thoughts this morning to all of our hearts. Let's bow in a wee word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank thee and we praise thee today for thy presence with us. We thank thee, Lord, for these young people that have sung today. And we pray, Lord, that you'll take up their lives and use them in thy glory. And we pray, Lord, for those in our own congregation. Lord, that young in life, they will come and trust thee as their own and personal Redeemer. And God, for those who are not walking with thee, they're not continuing to walk with thee in these days. We pray, Lord, that you would restore unto them the years that the locusts have eaten, perhaps even the months that the locusts have eaten. But, O oh God, that you would draw them back to yourself. We thank thee, Lord, and we praise thee for ever loving us with an everlasting love and saving us, those of us who are saved. We thank thee, Lord, that we can read our titles clear to mansions in the sky. O oh God, lead us on with yourself and give us that desire to walk with thee even in these days. So bless us now, we pray thee. We ask the Lord that you would separate us with thy love. And O oh God, that you keep your hand upon us till we meet again in thy will. Bring us to our homes in safety. For it's in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen.